Thanks very much, Sam. The final match on day one of the Vitality Women's World Cup 2018. Australia, the Hockey Roos, taking on Japan, known as Sakura Japan. Players are lined up, ready to make their way out. As we heard from the coaches, they've played each other a few times in recent years, so they know each other's game well. They're in pool deep with Belgium and New Zealand. No easy games at all at this World Cup in Pool D. So here they come, making their way out onto the turf at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. Australia in their famous goal, Japan in the red. And there's plenty of support for Australia, plenty too for Japan. Australia have won the World Cup twice. Japan have yet to lift the trophy. We will pause though first for the national anthems. And it will be the national anthem of Australia first. So that was Advance Australia Fair. And now it's the challenge of the national anthem of Japan, Kimi Gayo. Official proceedings have come to their conclusion. Now it's time for one last handshake before they can commence the battle between the two teams. Turn our attention to the lineups. Rachel Lynch will start in goal for Australia. Jody Kenny, as we heard before free match, is going to be a crucial player for them in defence and from penalty corners. Very inexperienced midfield, but it will work hard. And Slattery up front, and Rosie Malone is a new face that is going to be a key player for them. Kagayama is in goal for Japan, and they've got plenty of experience. Oikawa and Nato at the back will be important. Kato and Nagai in the midfield. And Shimizu is a player to really look out for up front. She's always lively, always involved. And in the subs, look out for Ishibashi wearing number 15. She'll be one of the smallest players on the pitch, but he's certainly got plenty of skill. Natsuki Neto giving the final instructions to her team. She's been given a lot of credit for her control at the back, but she says it is a team effort and we defend as a squad. Emily Smith just going through the last warm-up with the Australian players. And certainly Japan, they look a happy bunch, don't they? Will they be happy in an hour's time? So the ball just being placed on the centre line. Nagumi Kagayama just going through a final little limber up in goal for Japan.
will be Australia to push back and get us underway. Emily Smith over the ball. The whistle goes, and match four is underway. Australia versus Japan. First game in Pool D here at the 2018 World Cup. Ashley Morrison alongside me again. Olympian and former England and Great Britain player, Mal Clulo. Mal, this will be, again, a really intriguing game, and are we going to see another upset? Well, had I not just seen one in the, in the previous game, I'd probably say no. Um, but for me, I think it, as much as there's been plenty of games played recently between these two sides, you know, this is the World Cup, this is tournament hockey, and I think sometimes you approach those so-called friendly internationals slightly different to perhaps um, a tournament situation. So, you know, Japan know they've qualified, obviously, because they're hosting the Olympic Games, so their preparation can almost begin so much sooner than most other teams. Well, indeed, as Australia break forward, moving the ball well, our umpires for this match, Annalise Rostrum from South Africa and Alison Keogh from Ireland, and in the video umpires box is Amber Church from New Zealand. from the side. Well, it's interesting, these two teams have played a lot of games over the years, 46 games in total. Australia have won 34 of those games. Japan have only won four, and there have been eight draws. So, statistically, the odds are against Japan. As Keto runs forward and just takes a tumble. Kato goes again, it's just pushed over the side by Steph Kershaw. Making a way forward is Oikawa, feeds it along the line, looks as if it caught the shins, played on quickly by Japan, lifted brilliantly into the circle, and a really good clearance coming from Brooke Ferris. Shot comes in though, lifted high. Good start by Japan. Absolutely. It's Mano there with the with a shot, oh, pretty well defended actually by a teammate on that far post, but it's really good to see, you know, when you look at the players, Australia, tall and physical, Japan, small, but still got very athletic kind of style of play, and I think, for me, that will be the interesting thing, is the physicality of this game, and I don't think Japan can afford to get caught up in that, in the 50-50 kind of thing, they've got to move the ball on quickly, almost not allow Australia to close them down. As Emily Smith takes the free hit, look to just lay the ball back, the free hit goes against her. We heard Anthony Farry, the Australian coach of Japan, say defence was going to be a key part of the game for Japan, that they needed to play out of defence well, and Paul Godoyne, coach of Australia, was saying that he felt they needed to put pressure on Japan's defence. Keito again getting plenty of touches, just slipping as she tried to play the ball forward. Jody Kenny picks up possession, there is Paul Godoyne. Says he's here to win. They want to win every game. I'm sure every team feels that way. Across the top of the circle it came. Actually nobody there for Australia. Japan took a good deflection off Emily Smith's stick. Slattery though was dispossessed and Japan though find themselves having to play out of defence, clever from Kato, just playing it into Kershaw's foot. Naomi Ono, just trying to look at options, plays a diagonal pass, it's intercepted well by Edwina Bone, who's been out for over a year, so it's good to see her back out there. But there's quite a few Australian players coming back from injuries, if you... Look at Eddie Bone is back, and you've had uh, Maddie Fitzpatrick's been out with injuries since November. Georgina Morgan as well was out for a while. And she's back. She spent, and she was out actually against a, a game against Japan. In fact, it was. She got a foot injury, I think it was. And there's been out for a while. Part and parcel of the game, though, isn't it? Unfortunately, these are the things that happen when you're putting your body physically under so much um, pressure, not only obviously in matches, but the sacrifices and the huge amount of training that these players now do. Is that a good overhead pass? It's cleaned up at the back, though, by Bone. Japan 
will not be afraid to throw those long overhead passes. Don't. Made that straight into Japanese player. Saki Yamada. Good intercept now. Chance for Japan with Kawamura. To the left hand side, full stretch to bring it under control is Hazuki Nagai and that pass forward just a little bit too much for Shimizu. Anthony Farry, the Australian, played indoor hockey for Australia. <laughs> forward again from Australia and Kershaw. And just He's over to take a breather as Jody Kenny takes over the free hit. Nobs, who certainly is a key player in my opinion. She's rock solid at the back as Paris just comes to come forward now. And Fitzpatrick back to Paris. Paris closed down but looks to cut him field. Lovely running from Paris. Paris took to just feed it top of the circle. Sharp save, it's caught underneath the goalkeeper. Again, Japan did well not to concede. Okayama for a second didn't know where that had gone. It's a fantastic play by Paris to break through. It's Emily Hertz, first time on the backhand. Smashes the ball at goal. Kageyama st stood firm in the uh, Japanese goal and any goalkeeper will tell you they want to make the first save as early on in the game as they can. I'd like to know where the ball's gone though. <laughs> but as you say, crucial save just the same. Well, the USA in the game just before concede early in the match. You don't want to be doing that in those opening games of your World Cup campaign as Nobbs brings it down again. That's fast to nobody in particular, and Japan are quite happy, I think, to let that run out of play, although Grace Stewart was giving chase. Rikawa slips it into the midfield. Down in the end, well by Sagawa. Sagawa does well, but a really good tackle coming back, coming from Georgina Morgan. Now it's Paris with a little bit of space. Paris advancing over the 22 metres, slips it in, slattery full stretch. Another brilliant save from Kagayama. That was a really good save because Slattery's touch was going to take it into the path of Stewart. Kagayama had to make the save. Fantastically well worked um, play by. By the hockey ruse, you can see Catherine Slattery started her run way out wide and hooked her run in behind. Fantastic delivery. That's what you see so much from a player um, like Slattery, prepared to just dive full length, get something on it. She's either going to put it in the goal or she's going to try and find a teammate. Just a little danger sign in the last sort of two, three minutes for for Japan. Morgan got away with that one. It looked as if it was going to be taken away from him by Yuri Nagai. Ishibashi steals it back for Japan. Good 3D skills from there. Got a little bit of a bump from Morgan and as well to win a long corner. Japan play on, but unfortunately too quickly and it goes out of play. Ishibashi may be one of the smallest players, number 15 for Japan as it's given away. Top of the circle deflected away. Great save in the end by Nobbs, just getting a stick there to prevent Yuri Nagai opening the scoring. Not very often you see Georgia Morgan miss an overhead. Steal again by Australia. Okawa, back to Larry Slacky, came out on top. Watching the final five minutes of the first quarter. This chance is so far falling the way of the hockey ruse. Missy Bates. It's inside, so must travel the distance. Comes back to Bates now. The Japanese stick, so a long corner. Ready to take that, Renee Taylor. Back to Morgan, just a slight 
Miss Trapper, she played that ball and Japan come up with possession, but double teaming. To just take the ball over the side and away from Kawamura. Ukawa put under pressure. Good work by Slattery. This time down the line was a good pass, but didn't quite find its mark. Taken from the wrong spot. I was going to say, now you feel this is a much more a cat and mouse game than the one we just watched. Definitely. Um, I feel it's cagey from, from both sides at the moment. I think maybe part of part of that is I'm used to seeing Australia almost smother an opposition. So they come out, they play with a high intensity, they press high, they try and win the ball up the pitch, they get shots on goal, they win corners. Whether it's because they've played each other so much or not recently could be a factor. Um, I'm trying to work out which coach should be more pleased with that with the first quarter performance so far. Anthony Ferry, I'm sure. He was coach of Canada and managed to take them to the Olympics, but he would love to put one over his home country. So Australia just being told to get back the five metres. Steph Kershaw just stepping inside that imaginary line. Power. Oh, Slattery again with a stick low down. And now is Mikawa's and Japan's. Lifted over the top. Walked down well. In fact, no, it went out of place. So not quite so good from Yu Asai. She's just returned from an ACL injury. Was out for 10 months. And actually only played for two weeks before she left Japan for their tour before they came here. Got to hope your rehab's gone exceptionally well there, then, haven't you? Absolutely, it's a first major tournament as the ball's played into Smith. Smith looked to square it. Still alive for Australia. Penalty corner. Rosie Maloney is winning the, the penalty corner in the end, but Catherine Slattery does this actually so well. There's always an overhead, and she's always got a stick above trying to put you off, and she took the ball. Rolled it onto Emily Smith, who in turn rolls it onto Malone. Pops it onto the shin pad. First penalty corner of, of the game, and for me, this is where we're going to find out if it is the pitch or whether it's just nerves and, and poor execution from, from other teams, certainly in the first half of the day, because in Australia, they've got, well, three fantastic options at the top of the D. Jody Kenny is the player they choose. It's fired in. Good save by the keeper. The rebound comes back. Even better save from Kagayama. That was superb to deny Morgan. Long corner. That will give Japan a bit of confidence. Jody Kenny so lethal from penalty corners. Japan keeping it out as well as the rebound. It's three penalised. This is the, the second phase. Morgan does well to, to flick the ball. I would argue it probably should be a standard save for the goalkeeper to make, but actually, Kageyama did well because she was down low off the initial um, Jody Kenny slap, and she managed to get herself straight back up on her feet to make the second phase save. So, you play, outfield players seem to think that goalkeepers have it easy, but it was a good save. They do have it easy. Small space they have to cover. Yeah, but the reflexes they have and the agility, they're the stars of the show. Absolutely. You wouldn't catch me in goalie kit, that's for sure. No, exactly. A little bit mad as well. As it's trying to come forward. Well, it really has been negating each other, I suppose, is the best way to put it. The first 15 minutes, like boxers just sparring and trying to work each other out. Morgan just to flex it over the side. Japan want to play on quickly, and they do so. And really, that run just went nowhere from Kawamura. She didn't have the support, played on quickly, and didn't back herself to charge into the circle. 
free hit outside the 22 as we're in the final minute. So we play directly into the circle, which they do, but too far away from the danger area, and it goes harmlessly out of play. Kenny slides it for a good collection in the midfield. Driving forward was Emily Hertz. Still going. And then the ball just goes over the side off the Japanese player. Good work by Hertz as Kenny again comes forward. That may well be the last play of this quarter. And the players not even going to take the free hit as the hooter goes. That is the end of the first 15 minutes. Coaches make their way on Paul Godoy. Fair to say Kagayama has been the busier of the two keepers. And she jogs over to hear the wisdom of Anthony Farry. In the first 15 minutes, it's Australia nil, Japan nil. So, first match of Pool D. And you can imagine both these teams do not want to lose. And so Malklula, they're a little bit cautious, aren't they, both of them? Yeah, they are. Yeah, um, I guess you you know you've sat around in your hotel room waiting for eight o'clock in the evening to come along so you can actually start your World Cup campaign. And sometimes that's not easy to do. I'm I'm hoping that he's going to put something on that board in a minute so we can try and work out what what they're what they're trying to do. But it was a cagey affair. I don't think either side really got into into any kind of rhythm or perhaps the way that they would want to play. And I guess that's the beauty of having quarter times is that coaches get to get their teams in much earlier than they used to make those changes and hopefully um, we'll see some significant improvements. I mean, it's interesting we said how these teams had played each other a fair bit. They played in the Tri-Nations tournament in Cromwell in New Zealand, as you see just watching on the South African players. And it was Australia won the first game there 4-1 and then they actually were defeated 1-0 by Japan. So there's not much between the two teams as we now go pitch side to Krista Cullen. Good start, everybody settled in. What did you say in that quarter time to make your girls make the difference? Look, I reckon a good start would have been five goals up, but, but I understand where you're coming from. Uh, we, we talked about making sure that defensively we were nice and tight and we were looking to make sure they don't get too many easy counters. So uh, we've got to tidy up that a little bit, but yeah, yeah look, it's going okay. Your, your keeper's been the best area of the two. So are we going to build on that and hopefully see some attacking play in this next quarter? Yeah, it'd be great if she didn't touch the ball. That'd be fantastic. So definitely the plan. We certainly want to get some shots. I think if we're able to control a little bit better up there, we might get a better result. Perfect. Good luck. Thank you very much, Crystal. There's certainly a very relaxed Anthony Farry there. Oh, his humour. Good hit there to Australia, so Mama is going to have to be alert again. Hold on quickly. Mama Lowe. Long corner for Australia. I'd like to convert some of these into either goals or at least penalty corners. And across to Morgan. Slides the ball towards the D. It was a good ball by Morgan. Managed to pick out Malone. Malone desperately trying to keep possession. Windsor free hit for the hockey ruse. Kershaw over the ball, self-passes, has to go five metres before she goes in the circle, it did. And a penalty corner conceded. And Japan are thinking of referring this. Didn't seem to be a lot in that, to be honest. I think it was probably the first tackle on the top of the circle by NATO, the captain that has made Annalise Rostrum give the, the stick tackle. But certainly on the video, on that replay, it looked a little bit harsh, but Japan opting to keep the referral and not risk losing it, so getting the kit on and preparing to face the second Australian corner. It certainly looks as if she lunged, missed both ball and player, and it was just stepped on. So Kenny and Morgan, it comes to Morgan this time. Morgan low down, deflected up into the goal. And I think that was Emily Smith who got the final touch, or was it Malone, maybe? Maybe it's Malone, yes. So Rosie Malone, her first game in a major tournament, and she opens the scoring for Australia with an excellent deflection. It's a 
mean, it's beautifully delivered by Georgia Morgan. Seems to go through the legs, actually, of the of the post player. And when you've got those face masks on, it's sometimes really difficult to see the ball in and around your feet. Rosie Malone positions herself exceptionally well. Gets her hands low. Georgia Morgan delivers the ball at pace and it goes into the roof of the net. It's got to be a happy man, hasn't he? It is. Well, certainly a happy coach, even though he didn't really show it facially. So Rosie Malone. Great performance. She was only promoted to the Hockey Roos squad back in May this year. And got her first goal in that Tri Nations tournament I was talking against in New Zealand, and that was against Japan. So she obviously likes playing against the Japanese. Just goes to show if you can deliver the ball into deliver the ball well into key areas, you're going to score from it. And certainly. Your side just lost sight of it, it appeared in front. You called it well, Mel. Question is now, can Japan come back? That's a good overhead pass. Morgan having to come back and cover. Just showed too much of the ball there, and eventually it was just Edwina Bone coming back who stole possession. Stolen back again by Ishibashi this time. She's got it back again. It's very good close control. That was a good pass as well. Over the side as Shimizu trying to create something. Ishibashi again opts to take on the Australian players. Beautiful skills from her. Morgan, that full stretch, just deflected it away from the deep. Japan coming again through Aki Yamada. She loses out. Next, Stewart. Played on quickly by Smith, she looks to feed it back to Stewart. Stewart goes infield, good pass forward, Brooke Paris will let that run, looks to take on the keeper, slipped as she tried to shoot. And you'd have to say the keeper did well, had to come out, but Paris, well, she'll be disappointed. That's a great through ball by Grace Stewart. To be fair to Japan as well, two defenders running back, also one putting huge pressure on Paris, but slips at that crucial moment, as you mentioned, and opportunity wasted, but she did well once she was in the circle, she actually changed direction, so rather than running straight at the goalkeeper, she tried to move her. Didn't quite come off for her, but exactly what you'd want to see your, your forwards doing in that situation. Kiyama shouting instructions to the players in front of her. Oh, oh, well by Maddie Fitzpatrick. Kenny just pushing a little bit further forward, put under pressure now. All comes to Kershaw. Kershaw. Driving forward, Kershaw still. Good pass to Smith on the edge of the circle. He hit there goes Japan's way. Just feel at the moment now that it's Australia that's bossing the midfield. Yeah, I think I think they are. I think that goal's probably settled a few nerves and it's allowed them to sort of get, I guess, begin to work their patterns of play. Good turning from Kershaw, top of the circle. Japan just trying to keep the sticks down and get, get it clear. Kershaw, though, determined to keep pushing away closer to goal. Sometimes the key of you know, playing in midfield is actually just to move, is to, once you've won the ball, is just to move it on very quickly. And I think Australia, certainly in this tournament, have got some very, very highly gifted um, forwards, and you want to get the ball to them as quickly as you can. Alone, just leaving it behind for Brooke Perris, who in turn feeds it to Kenny. Kenny Smith takes a breather. Strong with Oak still on the attack. Into the circle they go. And that was a telling touch. One corner. The opposite where the ball went out of play. Well anticipated. That was good defence coming from Ishibashi. It's gone Australia's way, much to Japan's surprise. And they're very lucky and pleased that the pass to Emily Hertz was off target. They pushed numbers forward. I wondered initially whether Alison Keogh down on sort of near side to the um, to the comments box, the umpire had signaled the other way, and then Annalise Rostrin had changed the decision. But had that been the case, play would have stopped to allow Japan to get behind the ball. So again, I think it's one of those interpretation things. The ball was high. Well, it hit the knee anyway. Was it high? Was it dangerous? 
It's just going to have too much pace on it to be kept in play by Yuri Nagai. Yuri Nagai is the older of the two Nagai sisters. Azuki is the younger. Keito. Keito now with the... It just runs it over the line. That's a basic error that coaches just shake their heads at. She's won the ball back now. Ishibashi with a little bit of space. Looks to feed it forward, but that was that's really in no man's land. Easily picked up by Nobbs. Ferris going to turn in field. Finds the feet of Oikawa. Kenny. That's a super collection there by... Slattery, and she gets the foul against Nato. Paris, short little pass now. Australia looking to get inside the circle. It's hit the post, and Emily Hertz will get a second goal. Japan just hesitated for a moment. Hertz, it just couldn't have come back to her any better. Australia have a second goal. I mean, that's really come from, from the fantastic track by Catherine Slattery originally. And here again, it's her movement that's absolutely fantastic. And she's got her, her hand, she's got brilliant hands, so she's able to manipulate the ball, use the speed or the, the power and pace that's been generated. Probably unlucky not to score herself, but as you say, Emily Hertz, probably not going to score an, um, an easier goal than that one, but we have seen them miss sometimes. So you have to say 2-0 to Australia, they do deserve it on their second quarter performance. Well, it certainly was a wonderful deflection by Slattery, as you say, good run into the circle. Deflection hit the post and Hertz was Johnny on the spot. And maybe just Jill on the spot. So Japan, oh, they're going to find a way back into this match. At the moment, you just feel their, their heels a little bit. Having started well. Stewart now. Anthony Farry has the notebook out. I trust that he can look at the pitch and write. If I did that, it would just look like a spider had walked over it. We don't know what it looks like on his board, do we? That's true. Maybe our cameraman can zoom in and we can see. Starts Kristen to look over her shoulder. And she's perfectly placed. the big question can Anthony Farry get his team back in this match it just feels kind of almost been just a little bit hesitant I think the question for me in that first quarter you know I don't think Japan are playing any differently here I think Australia have certainly up the intensity and have been certainly more clinical with the opportunities they've created Shimizu with a good ball into the deep came through to Zuki Nagai, but just lifted up in the stick and the whistle went quickly and Morgan, while well, she tried to throw the aerial and it got caught in her stick and it came out wide to Kalindi Comerford, who wasn't expecting it, but managed to bring it under control. She couldn't do it that time. One area of Japan's game that they have improved is the penalty corner, so they'll feel that if they can get down and force a penalty corner, there is a chance for them to get something back in this match. Good steal from Keito. And she's taken a tumble again, and this time it's deemed that Kershaw has fouled her. I think if, as a team, you realise that's your strength. Your penalty corner routines, then definitely when you're in the circle, that is what you are. You're trying to win. That's where you see your opportunity of getting back into a game, and I think there are other teams in this competition that probably have a very, very similar philosophy. Renee Taylor manages to evade a couple of challenges. Out wide it goes, and Australia got numbers forward. They pick up again, out wide from Smith. Getting into the foot of Okawa, free hit to Australia, just outside the circle. Hurt self passes, ball must go five metres and tries to get towards the deep. Gets another free hit just off the foot. Matsuki Neto conceding the free hit just on the edge of the circle. It's a touch 
Pitching in from Kazuka. For a while, they played in the Four Nations in Breda and had some games in Belgium, Ireland, and over here in the UK. Shimizu cuts infield. Shimizu still going, just stopped for a moment though by good work from Carrie McMahon, saw her family in the stands. Japan find a goal before the half-time break. Smash the ball towards the goal, but it went over the baseline harmlessly. It certainly hasn't had the flow of um, the three matches that we've seen so far in, in the tournament today. And I, but I also think it's partly down to you know the very first game of the tournament, then England played, then we had an absolute cracker of a third game. But here, for me, in this game, there's been quite a number of errors, basic skill errors, um, balls bouncing off the sticks. Emily Smith trying to weave her magic into the circle. Out of Crookwell in New South Wales, Emily Smith. Picked up well by Malone. And trying to turn, gets a free hit. She was disappointed. She wanted to keep running towards goal. Sure. Corner given to Australia. Three minutes remaining in the first half. Australia leading by two goals to nil. Searching for a third. Knobs plays it out wide to Kenny. Kenny, a quick pass. It's a good turn from Renee Taylor, but possession given away. Japan, though, need to keep possession and be a little bit more miserly with it as they make their way forward. It's a hopeful pass from Manok. Had to play it though. Good work coming across from Kawamura. Almost won back by Mano, but helped down the line. Okawa steps forward, but the ball directly to Comerford. That's given away now, and there is a chance for Japan, but good defense by Kenny. Kenny trying to thwart Shimuzu. Shimuzu, did she get the foot? No. Just a long corner. I think she looked for a second as if she was thinking of referring that. Look as if it caught Kelly McMahon's foot, but it was all stick, but way away. And that's just a wasted pass. Australia just giving the ball away. Japan driving forward again. Baseline again, it's a heavy touch, and the ball goes out of play. You see what Japan are trying to do at the moment, it's their execution that's letting them down. Absolutely, they're getting themselves into, into the right positions, and I think, you know, as a coach, Anthony Farry's got to be happy with that in the first half. But as mentioned earlier, it is just those simple basic errors that are really letting Japan down at the moment. But I think the pleasing thing is it shouldn't take too much to, you know. Little tweaks, little changes could make a huge difference to, to Japan in this tournament and for the rest of this game. A little pass thrown over the top. Malone gives chase, but it's bouncing away from her. She just waited until it was picked up by your side. Your side is just going to forward again. Paris now. No pressure to Keito. May well be a card. Indeed, a card for Brooke Paris, so she will sit out the last 27 seconds and a minute and a half of the second quarter. In fact, maybe the third quarter. I'm behind myself now. That was good anticipation by Ishibashi. Oh, somehow the free hit goes against it. Short smashes that down the side, and that will be the final play of the first half. 
Australia are definitely in the driving seat in this match. Japan just going to get a little bit more cohesion. The first goal coming courtesy of Rosie Malone. And then a second scored by Emily Hertz. Sees Australia going in in a good position at the moment in this first game in Pool D. Score at half time is Australia 2, Japan 0. We're going to go down pitch side now, though, to Krista Cullen. So, Rosie, your first World Cup, your opening game, and you get the first goal. Just talk me through what that felt like. Oh, um, we, we practiced a lot in our corners, and um, I think having been here in the arena with an amazing crowd, it just kind of excites you, and I guess. I was just ready to go, I was in the right place at the right time, we practiced it a thousand times and yeah, it just paid off so I'm stoked. Perfect, well done. And then obviously a little bit more momentum came and then you're able to get 2-0 up. Are we expecting Aussie to, you know, keep turning on to turning on the burners and start really capitalising in the second half? Yeah, well I mean like after watching the games that happened today, uh, anything can happen and I think that's um, that's very evident and we knew Japan was going to be a hard fight. So we've been told that every game we have to act like it's grand final, so that's what we're doing. Perfect, Thank good luck. So, Paul, 2-0 up, you take that. What's the tactic to make sure you capitalise and get those three points in the second half? I don't think a lot changes, you know. We want to make sure we're a bit smarter with the ball, maintain our lead, but also still create chances. They're a very good team, they're dangerous. So it's up to us to, you know, keep playing uh, hard, tough hockey. And in your attacking third, you've turned, o you've turned over the ball from them defensively, very close, high up. Is that a tactic of yours in the final quarter? Yeah, I guess it's no, no, uh, no secret that we do that. We, we're trying to put pressure on them and we hope to continue with that. Perfect. Best of luck. What a beautiful sunset here in London. And has the sun set on the land of the rising sun in this match. We've still got half an hour to go. Can Japan find a way back? They're trailing Australia, two goals to nil. Rosie Malone with the first goal. And the crowd, out they're having a whale of a time, aren't they? So Japan. Looking to push back, they're delaying the start. The whistle went and went again. And eventually we're underway. Shimizu. It's a touch, it's played over the side by Kershaw. So Lee, we know both teams can play better than we probably witnessed in the first half. It was rather scrappy. And plenty of turnovers by both sides. Just feeling if Japan can get a goal, it'll maybe bring the game to life. It certainly would, but based on the first half, probably going to be a curse of the commentator now. I'm not really sure where it's going to come from. Rachel Lynch was a pretty much a spectator in that first half. We thought maybe uh, Jocelyn Bartram might come on for the second half because she was warming up all the time. The, the rest of the Australian team were inside, but Paul Godoyne's kept with, um, with, with Lynch in the goal. So for me, I'm not sure how Japan are going to get back into this game at the moment from, based on what I've seen in that first half. Well, I tend to agree with you as Malone makes a good run forward, just leaves the ball behind. And Australia keeping possession a little bit better. Kenny having to hurry, feeds Edwina Bone. Cut out well by Neto. Just that link really for Japan at the moment in the midfield to their forwards. It's just not been happening. Probably we should give Australia's defence a little bit more credit than we probably have, Mel. Yeah, no, I, I think I agree with you on that one. Sometimes I think we, we're almost disappointed by by one team rather than giving credit to another one. And I think you're definitely right in that situation. I think um, apart from that first quarter, I think Australia really have dominated the game and deserve that 2-0 two 2-0 two lead at the moment. Well, it's gone over the baseline, so it will be a Japan free hit. The first time these two teams met was Way back in 1967 in Osaka, and Japan actually won that first meeting 4 2. A long time before that, another victory. Kershaw, a lovely arcing run, gets to the top of the circle, but was penalised. To debate the issue with the umpire, but the umpire always wins those debates. 
Although I did witness Brooke Paris have a debate with an umpire, and the umpire changed her mind once. So, Brooke Paris obviously good debating skills. Nato. And there's a chance now. Breaking forward, but just too strong. Getting ahead was Carrie McMahon. It's one back again by Japan. On the reverse, just wide. It was the penalty corner has been given. Good chance now for Japan. I think it's a, it's a fantastic shot by Kawamura. Well, oh, no, Nagai, sorry. Lynch with the big left glove, but puts it, palms it straight onto the Australian defender. And as you said in the first half, you, this is possibly Japan's best opportunity of getting back into the game. They usually have good corner routines, and I guess we're about to find out. Well, and the Mora looked really good when they were in Breda and so it's going to be important that she performs well now. And will be injected by Mami Carino. Nomura waits, Oikawa next to it, comes to Nomura. Just the wrong side of the post if you're a Japanese fan. Kenny, happy to play back, Japan looking to press higher. And they've won possession back. Keito now carries forward. Slips a good pass. Just trying to go around the back. Georgina Morgan did really well just to tap it onto the foot of Carino. Now she throws the aerial pass. Stewart coming off the flank. Looks to close down. As you like, though, at the back. Naomi Ono. Well, the free hit then given to Japan. There's Mark Hager watching on. He's the coach of New Zealand's Black Sticks, who are also in Pool D along with Belgium. They will be playing against Belgium tomorrow night, but obviously checking out the opposition. He was very happy that his team got the gold medal in the Commonwealth Games gold medal match and I was talking to him and he said maybe they've got over the hump now, that hump of belief where he felt that the team had the talent but sometimes they just didn't believe in their own ability as Stewart can't get the shot away. Penalty corner though is awarded to Australia. I think what Grace Stewart does really well there is she realises she can't get the shot away so rather than winding up and smashing it she then tries to put the um, her stick back on the ball and pops out to a teammate onto a japanese leg for australia's third penalty corner of the game and we heard the umpire say that wasn't dangerous so it was above the knee when it hit the japanese player kawamura but it wasn't dangerous because it was only just lifted high and it hit the body so if you're wondering why that was above the knee and the penalty corner has been awarded that was why the umpire was explaining so Jody kenny Good stop, Kenny sweeps, Kenny sweeps it home, Australia have a third. And that's what we've got used to seeing Jody Kenny do. And that will give her confidence as well. It's a good trap, good injection and a really good finish. Back to basics really, isn't it? Injection, trap at the top. Jody Kenny, I think one of the best tournaments I ever saw her uh, flicking so well was um, Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, but she's so tall, she's got such long levers that she's able to, to get down exceptionally low and then generate the power. She uses the transfer of her body weight exceptionally well. Puts it into that corner above uh, the post player's head for 3-0 to Australia. Well, it was right in the top corner. Didn't really give Kageyama much of a chance. And Jimmy Kenny, who we mentioned, has had a year out because she gave birth to her son, Harrison, on the 27th of June last year. And then she said she wasn't ready to walk away from the game just yet, and she shows why with that penalty corner execution. And she gives a lot of credit to Luke Dorner, the former Kookaburra drag flicker, who played a big part in developing her as a drag flicker. She used to actually just hit penalty corners, and he then stepped in when she was 19 years of age, and started helping it. 
Japan now really do have a mountain to climb. It's a good steal. Shimizu has support if she looks inside. She cuts inside herself, then feeds the ball off. Lynch comes, it's a goal for Japan! They have pulled one back, a brilliant finish from Kawamura, but it was created by Shimizu. Well, they've certainly got fight in them. The Sakura of Japan, Kawamura pulls the goal back. Oh, it's a fantastic bit of skill, takes out two Australian players, rolls the ball to Kawamura really, really well. Shimizu it was with the initial breakthrough and rolls it onto that backhand for a tomahawk. Rachel Lynch comes off the ground, off the line, sorry. Didn't really stand a chance, had to come, had to come off narrow the angles. Fantastic finish um, by Japan, just goes to show what they can do. Well, it has, suddenly the game has come to life, two goals within a minute. But it's still a two-goal cushion for Australia. Yes, Fitzpatrick. Couldn't keep that in play. Japan with their tails up. Sagawa self passes from the side. Brooke Paris comes back, makes it difficult, gets a stu stick hooked. And so Sagawa wins a free hit. She just leaves it behind now. There's the goal scorer. She's probably just telling them how good it was. I think two defenders became three now. As I would. When I used to play, we used to call ourselves international cones when somebody did that. I like it. Oh, unable to keep that one in play. Nina Guy. Anthony Ferry. That's a lifeline, but whether he can see his team pull back and get that interesting player in the back, Erica Akaya, who's the backup keeper. Normally she is just shouting encouragement non-stop throughout the game. She's one of my favourite reserve goalkeepers because of her enthusiasm. A little bit shell-shocked today, though. Well, it's not always easy being a backup goalkeeper, is it? I don't know how many, how many opportunities she gets to play. But if that's what she does and she is the, you know, the cheerleader to, to sort of inspire the team, then she knows her role within the team. Also, if she gets the call to go on the pitch, she knows that role as well. She shares in all the moments of joy and misery. And Japan have come to life now. And as unlucky as it just mistaken there, but that's a really good intercept and a break forward from Ishibashi. Ishibashi, skillful player, goes into the D, keeps it in play along the baseline. Can she manufacture a penalty corner? Lays it back. Lynch has to save. Deflected. Lynch saves. It's gone. Oh, it's gone the wrong side of the post was so close to Japan scoring, Yuri Nagai. Lynch saved, it came back out. This is Nagai's shot, came back out to her and was just deflected almost over the line by the Australian players. Now Paris bursting down the middle, slips a good pass to Emily Smith who swings first time but misses. Perhaps a harsh comment comment to make now but player of Emily Smith's class you'd expect to potentially for her to actually trap that ball move the goalkeeper and slot it into the empty net having said that she is the type of player that could hit that on the first time and stick it in the roof of the net so Sorry though, Japan are managing to intercept as we see them do it again now bursting forward is Carino Carino into the circle good defense from Morgan though just takes it off the stick of Carino she's now got to be calm at the back Get some help coming from Fitzpatrick. Japan is stealing possession now in the midfield and putting Australia under pressure. This game has just changed. And here they come again. The guy plays it in and over the baseline it goes. This time off the stick of Carrie McMahon. Long corner Japan. for Nagai, comes back now to Uwasai, first time ball, and it's deflected again by McMahon over the baseline. Can Japan get a second, because if they do, it will really bring this game to life. That This time it's played over the baseline by Fitzpatrick. Uwasai, that was just too obvious and well read by Morgan. 
Slattery has to really put a body there. That was courageous from Neto, although Neto is the player penalised. Hurts combining well. Comerford just dinked over the side. Good defensive play from Miki Kazuka. Hurts now in the corner to drill that one across the deep. Took a deflection, long corner. Morgan already waiting on the 22 as the ball's delivered to her. Back to Morgan again. Good block from Carino. Just given away. And now Japan will move it quickly. Had a chance to counter attack. That was quite clever to draw the foul by Shimizu because there was not much on for it. Ball comes to her from Keto. She has Morgan to beat, knocks it ahead of her. Covering though is Nobs. Morgan. Bone. I just apologise that she whistled a little bit early. Oh, so close to being intercepted by Kawamura. No doubt got a tail up, having got a goal for Japan. And breaking forward again is Malone. And he gets the free hit. Lovely turn from Kershaw. Kershaw into the deep, into the side netting. Couldn't get the ball over the line quick enough to unleash that the backhand there. You can see what she was trying to do. Again, sometimes if you're being hypercritical, if you're that player on the back post, you'd rather the ball be flat along the floor. Certainly going across goal, make the goalkeeper make the save, possibly pick the pieces up off the rebound. It's a slight deflection off the stick of Gary McMahon. Japan playing on, we're in the final three minutes of the third quarter, can they find another goal before the final break? Into the D it comes, good deflection. And those superb defending in the end to just take it clear, and calmly take it clear was Renee Taylor. Japan though, here they come again, into the circle, to the baseline, just dinked over the line, long corner. Good work again, Carino getting involved. They haven't given up, that's clear. And they really think they can get something out of this match. Neto helps it on first time. Nagai spins, but it goes to Kenny. Kenny then helps it out wide to Smith. Smith just smashes it forward, picked up by Neto, her opposite number, the captain of Japan. And hit into the circle, though, intercepted by Kenny. Smith leaves it behind, and Morgan will go to the air. Asai brings it down. Okawa. Japan managing to keep possession a little bit more, and just as I say that, I put the curse on them and they give it away. I think Japan have certainly um, upped the intensity and the, the speed at which they're playing the game. Happy also to commit players forward, whereas in the, certainly in the first half there was one or two sort of roaming or breaking out from, from their sort of defensive press, but it's really good to see them committing numbers and arguably, I'd say, uh, on the balance of, of this quarter, probably deserve to get a little bit more from it. Can they get two goals? That's the question at the moment. Australia still defending well. Japan have had the possession. They've created opportunities, but not too many shots. Being fired at Rachel Lynch as down the line it's played. Kawamura, who's really come to life, dispossessed. Good possession, one at the top of the circle. So go up. Shibashi, again, brave by her, free hit to Japan. It's a really good tackle by Jody Kenny, one back by Oikawa. She goes on the reverse, plays it out wide onto the left-hand side, trying to get inside the deep. Edwina Bone with a good tackle, Japan. Well, certainly the fans in the crowd thought that that was a stick check. You could hear them moaning below us. Japan have got 30 seconds to try and find a goal. They need to get it into the circle. And the guy plays on quickly. Slides it in there. Up it goes off the stick. Morgan combines. 
will be, you think, almost the last play of this quarter. The game has certainly come to life. Two goals within a minute, just after the restart. And Japan have really been spurred on by their goal. And Australia, to be fair, withstood most of what Japan has thrown at them. So Jody Kenny got Australia's third from a penalty corner. And then it was a wonderful goal set up by Shimuzu Kawamura, pulling one back for Japan. It means that we go into the final break, and it is Australia three, Japan one. The big question, Malkulu, is can Japan get another, or will Australia go on and just claim a victory, which looks almost a certainty. Yeah, I think it, I think as, as we look at these highlights of Jodie Kenny sticking the, uh, her first effort, a goal into the into the goal to make it 3-0 after 35 minutes, you almost felt how many more were Australia going to score in, in the remaining um, half. And actually, to be fair to Japan, that third goal going in almost then provoked them to play better. Um, and I think certainly in the, the second half of, of that particular quarter, as we see uh, Shimuzi running through, takes out two Australian defenders really well and then plays the ball into Kawamura to hit the backhand shot and sort of raise the roof of the crowd that's here. At that moment, you think, well, if Japan can get the next one, we and I still think that if Japan can get the next one, I think we could be in for an interesting um, final quarter. But for me, I still think Australia have got the experience and they've got the quality in their side to, to walk off the pitch with three points. You can see Jodie Kenny giving her instructions. Rosie Malone started the scoring tonight. 20-year-old from Burley Heads in Queensland. Also has played representative football soccer for Australia as well. So a very talented young athlete. So the final quarter about to get underway. Can Japan find two goals or can Australia go on? and claim what looks like an assured victory in their opening game in Pool D. Japan again looking to go straight away from where they left off. And through the legs of Edwina Bone. I'm not quite sure how Japan didn't get the free hit there. A bit baffled by that one. Kershaw has been lively for Australia. And goes back to Kenny. So this has been the first day of the World Cup. Here are the results earlier today. Germany 3-1 over South Africa. England drew one all with India. Kept in play brilliantly. Lynch had to save that. And then we had a real upset in the game. USA versus Ireland with... Ireland winning 3-1. China play Italy tomorrow. Argentina play Spain. Netherlands, Korea. And then New Zealand play Belgium. We hope that you'll join us wherever you are in the world. Catch all of the action. Breaking forward. Good run again. This time coming from Kalindi Comerford. Into the circle it goes. Japan had to be quick. And a penalty corner has been given. <laughs> given it Alison Kier has given it for the ball deliberately going off the baseline I saw this in a game earlier but you can what's your question can't tell me that that's poor execution of a skill okay that's fine okay churchy um I've given the short corner for the ball intentionally over the back line she's saying she didn't have a chance to play it Q check this is going to be interesting because, to me, it's open to interpretation. I think I think it is, and I think this is something that the ladies' game isn't as good as in the men's game. I... Oh, well, Carl gets the ball there. She definitely... Well, if it came off the back of a stick, it would be a penalty corner anyway for a back stick. Yeah, she? it definitely wasn't the back of the stick. As the ball is here, she's gone to eliminate the skill. But for me, she's pushed the ball too far ahead, and like it or not, I'd say it's a penalty corner. Because she certainly wasn't impeded. 
by I think it's Comerford there. There's definitely she's not she's not impeded there at all. So I would be inclined to agree with the, it being a penalty corner. Referral loss for Japan. Both teams have one referral. Oikawa, I think it was probably more out of frustration, decided to appeal that one. If you get the decision right, you keep it. Japan, as you can see underneath their name, a little red triangle now. It means they've lost their referral. And they also now have to defend this penalty corner. So Smith to stop for Kenny Kershaw is also at the second battery, but I'm sure they'll go to Jody Kenny. They do. Kenny takes a touch, tries a hit. Shot on the turn from Malone, and it wasn't far away. That's a cracking piece of skill here. Rolls the ball onto it and uses the back foot space really well, squeezes the ball into the turf to try and get the ball over. Peggy Armour in goal, but just didn't quite come off for her. And potentially half a chance on the far post, but... Well, Slattery was there to try and tap that one in. Well, now <laughs> the feeling is from the crowd that that should have been a penalty corner. <laughs> See what they can hear what the crowd thinks of it as well. Well, yeah, if the crowd was the video umpire, Japan would have a penalty corner. Yeah, I don't think there's much difference between those no, there's two. Not. There's not. There's no other. There's no other way or no other line that that ball is going to take apart from going over the baseline. So if you're doing it one end, it should be given the other. And Oikawa over the ball. She'll certainly remind the umpires, I'm sure. Having spent time playing in the Netherlands. Kershaw looking to play on, but from the wrong spot. Certainly she was at least two or three metres ahead of where the offence had occurred. Still plenty of time for Japan to get a goal. It should be intercepted, and it is. Nomura. Plays it for, that's a great ball inside the dig. Comes across, deflected, Lynch, brilliant save off the stick of Eddie Bone. Well, it was going to go in the bottom corner, and it would have been a goal because the pan shot was deflected off the defender, but Lynch, brilliant. And now Japan have a penalty corner. Well, this is the, the save initially. I think it's actually Edwina Bone seems to take the ball off Rachel Lynch's pads, which you've got to be pretty confident to do that, otherwise you get half a touch and it goes in the back of the net. Before you know it, it's 3-2, but credit again to Japan. They've, they've kept going, they've kept persevering. They've won their second penalty corner of the game. Yeah, but I thought Lynch got the touch. I think it was Eddie Bone's stick in the end, and she recovered well. So a chance again for Kana Nomura. Just a slight shift to the right. Stop well, Nomura sweeps. Oh, it's deflected wide, long corner. Wanting to get on with things quickly. A free hit to Japan, just outside. It came up off the Australian stick. Nagai trying to weave some magic along the circle. Got the pass in. It's a bit of a scramble in there, and Australia will get it clear. Good work by Kershaw, in fact, no, it's come off her shin, so another free hit to Japan. Ishibashi goes one way, then the other, into the circle. Kershaw, stick low down, Ishibashi, great 3D skills from her, wins another penalty corner for Japan, and boy, did the crowd like it. Fantastic individual skills here by Ishibashi. Jody Kenny, really, take your pick on the number of stick tackles she's unfortunately made in there but probably victim of the fact that she wasn't moving her feet in the tackle she was just wafting the stick around making contact and also waiting at the top of the circle Hazuki Nagai tends to usually hit her penalty corners 
sure they will stick with Namora. Again, a shift to the right. Namora waits. It's a good trap. Namora sweeps, deflected up this time off an Australian player again. Another long corner to Japan. It's Jody Kenny on the post. Patron, I have to say, getting the ball out a little bit slow for the Japanese who were a bit upset about that. Quick ball in on the reverse. It was easily collected by Australia. Try to play out. Will be picked up by Neto. Determined to get there. Driven into the circle. Trying to turn was Kawamura. Another long corner. Good spell of pressure from Japan. Certainly all things that have been very good for Japan have come through Kawamura. Wasn't quite so good, and now Australia look to break quickly. Rosie Malone takes it, self-passes, plays it in the path of Emily Hertz. Coming across was the player who lost possession, Kazuka. She's done very, very well to halt that attack by Australia. Circle penetrations, 8-1 to one there in this final quarter, showing how Japan have really put their foot on the gas, trying to put Australia under pressure. Get it to Australia, though. They've withstood it at the moment. Again, that's not the best of passes back. This time from Naomi Ono. Hurts the tries to apply pressure. The hit goes against Kazuka. Here come Australia. Brooke Perris driving forward. Hurts just lays it back. Slattery. Reflections there. It's gone into the goal, but luckily... For Australia, there was no touch, so it was for a Japanese player. So it will be, in fact, a long corner directly in front of the goal. You see Bates over the ball. Japan pick up possession. There's, I think they're going to miscommunicate there, but that was just clever play. It's played off the foot by Carino. Or no. Yeah. Has recovered well. Help forward. Lovely little touch from Keto. Crowd appreciated that one. And now it's a break forward from Yuri Nagai. Great pass into the deep. Taken wide. Lynch has done brilliantly. Still alive for Japan. There's four players there. And it was such a good opportunity. Shimizu, though, was forced wide brilliantly by Rachel Lynch. Aerial pass to Neto, she brings it down, Stewart ahead of her. Stewart just forces her back, she smashes that towards the D. Nagai can't pick up, breaking forward is Kershaw. Always happy to go on the attack. Catches the foot of Nagai, the pressure eases for a moment. Hurts now picks up for Australia. Good pass forward, Slattery forced wide though, keeps it in play. Wikawa follows up, and the free hit goes Australia's way. Opportunity that was for Shimuzu. That's just fantastic vision, I think, as well by Nagai running down this left hand side. There was another forward that actually made the, a lead almost into the same channel, but she had the, I guess, the calmness and composure to look across and find a teammate on the other side of the pitch. Hertz fires it in, caught the shoulder of the Japanese player. Rachel Lynch here. Just forcing Shimuzu wide. She does well to stay up on her feet for as long as she can. You can see sort of the agility. She was ready. She was waiting for the move to happen, and she timed the dive and taking of the ball to, to absolute perfection. And Rachel Lynch has just set up her own goalkeeping academy, hasn't she? Stomp. So, if ever you wanted a good advertisement for that, that's it. <laughs> Making saves like that. Kato knocks it past Bone, that was great skill. Kato surging forward, looking for options. Bone comes back, forces a wide, Kato slips, played the ball, she thought, into the body of Comerford, but no whistle, and so Australia came forward, but again it's stolen back, good intercept from Japan, and this time Ono. Ono plays it into the D, kept alive, really good pickup, and a good save at the near post from Lynch. Well placed, and into the pads it went from Shimuzu. Oh, and Keto 
Well, she's not the tallest player. She was desperately trying to reach and wished her arms were a bit longer. Rachel Lynch gets her angles spot on. Make sure that she's covering the near post. But again, fantastic that to actually get the shot on target there on the spin. She knew exactly where she was in the circle. Got to wonder, you know, if Japan had been able to play like this for the other three quarters, what the scoreline might have been. Oh, yep. Certainly they've shown what they're capable of in this second half, really. Maybe just left it a little late. 53% possession to Japan, and that's going to be picked up by them. Another free hit awarded. Shibashi picks it up. Again, good close control, but eventually it was just taken off her by Renee Taylor, a much taller figure. Another good pass. Kaw Kawamura doing well. So another penalty corner for Japan. Is this the moment? I have to say, the way they battled, they almost deserve another goal. It's a clumsy challenge more than anything from Kalindi Comerford. Mayumi Ono makes her way down to the baseline. Change at the top of the circle. Aki Yamada is now waiting. We haven't seen Oikawa, but she's waiting there as well. So will it be Yamada at the first batch or Oikawa? It goes to Oikawa. She sweeps it low. It's, it's driven into the Japanese players' feet. Good defense from Australia. Everybody getting really low to defend that one. I think it was Carrie McMahon in that situation. Left hand flat on the floor. Clearly, they've done their homework. If Japan is slapping the ball off the top, they tend to keep the ball flat on the floor. She knew exactly what she was doing. Did indeed. Yes. You've got to think as well about the vitality player of the match and your thoughts on that one. Honestly, it's a hard one to pick because I don't, I don't feel that there has actually been a standout performance. Um, but for me, simply for a she scored one goal, she's cleared one off the line from, from a corner, and I just think her leadership at the back, um, I think she's used that experience exceptionally well, marshalled the, the defence and the young players in front of her, so my player of the match is Jodie Kenny. That will please up coming back, and Rachel Lynch will just clear that one. Three minutes left, there is the Vitality player of the match, Jodie Kenny. Back after having a baby. And I'm sure that her husband would be very pleased about that award. She's on the ball now, lifts the aerial pass. Ishibashi coming across and tries to just bring that under control, does well. And no weather at the moment, just short pass, but the teammate didn't read it. Malone now on the reverse tries to get it in there. As the Mexican wave goes around the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. Stolen again. Australia looking for one last goal. Smith was the player. Good defence from Neto. And Japan find another goal. Good deflection by Renee Taylor. Gives it back to Australia. Malone, short little pass from her, feeds it out to Comerford. Coming for driving towards the baseline, look to just slip that rounder back. Good defence though again from Japan. Ball now with Sagawa. Sagawa, well, what, collides with Morgan and Sagawa slow to her feet. Morgan, this was quickly to her feet. Okawa. In Japan, that was just a hopeful flick forward, but Keito is giving chase. Good pressure from Japan, stolen back by them. They've got numbers in the D, played in. And it was Shimizu as won a penalty corner. 
uh, Carino rather. Well, I think Kershaw's gonna refer it, is she or not? I think Annalise Rostrand's explained the situation up off Kershaw's stick into her own body. Again, I think absolutely the correct decision. Well, is there a consolation goal with a minute 30 left on the clock for Japan? Kana Nomura and the guy alongside it. Again, they shift two steps to the right. And the guy says, I'll have a go. Hits it, Lynch saves low down, logging. And it's cleared well by the player of the match, Jody Kenny. Japan on one last attack. Nagai looking to feed it back to Ishibashi, but it's well read and stolen again by Kershaw. Kenny launches it high. Oikawa brings it down and then belts it forward, but it deemed dangerous. Almost old school hitting off the top. Nagai takes the ball out to the right hand side. Lynch logs. And then a good safe clearance by Kenny. And then a play. So in the final minute, Japan. Oh dear. Oh, the ball boy just colliding there with Carino. And she didn't see him and went down rather heavily. Here is a chance though. Keeping the ball in play if it count is Yuri Nagai. Into the circle she goes. Yuri Nagai flicks it back. Should be a goal. Well, surely that's a stroke. The goal has been given though. And it's Akiko Kato who deserves that goal. She's worked tirelessly for Japan. Oh, they'll be disappointed it came so late, but Kato gets one for Japan. It's fantastic advantage here as well by Rostron. You can see she's giving the, the penalty stroke, but has the experience to realise there's still an opportunity there for Kato. Oh. Fantastic finish, and you've got to say, Japan thoroughly deserved that second goal. And as I said previously, if only they could have played like this, at least from the second quarter, who knows what would have happened. Well, in Rio, it was 3-2 to Australia, and it looks like it's going to be 3-2 here in London at the World Cup. Australia hanging on, and it's been a really gallant performance by Japan. And counting down. And calmly, Australia do that. Kenny puts her hands in the airs and celebrates with her teammates. But Australia were made to work really hard for that victory. And Paul Godoy, it looked like it was going to be one-way traffic when Rosie Malone scored early in the match. 17th minute, Jody Kenny got a third to make it 3-0. And it looked like it was going to be plain sailing. But Paul Godoy, I'm sure, will be a little bit concerned at the way Japan were able to get back in the match and the courage they showed, Mel Clulo. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, I think you've got to give Japan credit. They changed the way they, they were playing. They upped their intensity. They threw numbers into attack. And they caused Australia a lot of, a lot of problems. And I think, for certainly for Mark Hager, looking on when, in this particular pool, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, again, make for some interesting uh, matches later on in the tournament. But... I think in the end, the experience that Australia have, particularly of tournament hockey, is probably what's got them three points. Probably is. Well, it's an interesting pool. Belgium and New Zealand are also in the pool. They meet tomorrow. And I'm sure goal difference could have something to play. Beautiful shot of London, but it is Australia that have come through in this match. The final score, Australia three, Japan two. So what does that mean at the moment? Well, this is what it means. It's the first game in Pool D, and it means Australia sit on top. Japan at the bottom, but just minus one on the goal difference. And tomorrow, New Zealand will play Belgium, and that will be a crucial game for both those teams. It's been a brilliant first day here at the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. Germany defeated South Africa 3-1. England had to fight really hard and come from behind to get a one-all draw with India. And the USA were defeated by Ireland in the upset of the tournament so far. Australia, well, they clung on for a victory against a gallant Japan. There's plenty more hockey coming in the next two weeks from the stadium.